Hello. Hello. Good evening to all with a proclivity for thrills, chills, and morbid kills. We're your hosts for this and every episode to come. So cuddle up and prepare to call Killers and Mysteries Hotline. Ooh, ooh, I like it. I like it. That's a good one. Thank you. (laughs) All right. Um, So today, I mean, we've already discussed this, but we're going to be talking about H.H. Holmes, America's first, the the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, He is considered America's first serial killer however this is this is a little tidbit that i wanted to tell you about i i kept this a secret from you uh in oh. that in that book that i i was reading that i showed you um let me see if i can get it up here um america's um, american serial killers the epidemic years um oh, yeah. i was uh i was reading it and uh h.h H. holmes was mentioned in it and um Remember, this is all like a, I, I'm pretty sure this is just opinion of uh, the writer, mm-hmm. but they consider H. H. Holmes um, almost not even a serial killer. Interesting, right? They they wow. said um, even if he was a serial killer, he wasn't the first one. Uh, huh. Yeah, there was. Um, he wasn't even the first prophet serial killer. What? Yeah, apparently the Harp brothers were a little bit before him, so maybe that's something to dig into in a in a couple episodes or something. We'll look at the Harp brothers, huh. see what their crimes are. Um, does, does it say why they att- like what was the reasoning behind attaching H. H. Holmes with being the first serial killer in the states? They didn't say why he was considered that, but they said. Because he did mainly, um, like, fraud. Like, he did more fraud than he did uh, actually killing. killing. Like, every, all of his kills, are, except for uh, a few people that we'll mention later, um, were actually just circumstantial. Like, he, like, like, it's all theories, basically. Like, the murder oh, castle, okay. apparently there's no evidence, which I yeah. really don't believe, but... <laughs> Like apparently, the murder castle just didn't happen. Like yeah. it was built, but it didn't. Uh, nothing, oh, nothing no. went down. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, like I'm kind of interested to see like if we can maybe find some stuff later on and like return yeah. back after all of the stuff that we present here. Yeah. Which, I just figured that was a cool little tidbit for you. Hmm. He probably was considered America's first, like, serial killer because that mustache. That's an evil yep. mustache. Yep, well, that mustache <laughs> right there just tells you. Just and, and, like, I think it's, like, also, like, his, like, I just woke up after, like, a four-day bender. Yeah, on he's, top, like, he's like, dude. What? Dude, where's my carriage? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I gotta go claim these like bonds at the bank right away they're not even mine holy shit oh shit dude (laughs) (laughs) oh shit um so yeah so today um our plan is to give you some life and stories behind uh herman mudget aka hh holmes um little name change right all right bad raps all around (laughs) Um, <laughs> and then, uh, we're also going to offer you some stuff like what he did in the media, um, or, like to influence the media and like all these, uh, different representations of him as well. Um, and then we even have two little, um, side stories, not necessarily to do with killers, but with us. Some mysteries. Little mysteries that we can't explain to this day. Nope. And that's kind of going to be our premise for this uh, for this lovely podcast. We're we're mm. we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, coming in hot. Coming in F. hot. Coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. You wanna you wanna kick us off? Tell me tell me how good old Mister Mudget got started. All right, I will do just that. So, um, as as we said, Herman Mudget 
was born in 1861. Um, as far as I'm aware, he had like a pretty decent childhood. Like it wasn't like it wasn't crazy. Um, they were. It was a large and wealthy family t- that he was born into too. So like I don't know why he ever figured. You know, <laughs> I gotta get more money. Um, Interesting. Right. Um, he had an older brother and sister and a younger brother and sister. So he's the middle child. So that could have been it. Ah, uh, middle child syndrome. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't get the attention you want, so you lash out and be the black sheep of the family. Exactly. You got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Anything God. for that. Anything for that attention from the parent. Right, exactly. Um anyway, uh yeah, so like even from a young age, he like he showed extremely high intelligence. Like he was he was like the 1870s version of a nerd um oh my uh, god um, i want what that would have looked like because <laughs> you 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 think of like the glasses the calculator the pocket protector it, it, <laughs> it's basically just homes without a mustache <laughs> Homes without a mustache and an abacus. Just yep. <laughs> how many people am I going to kill today? <laughs> Depends on how much money I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So like even from even from his high intelligence and young age, he still had like a lot of interest in medicine, which we'll see like come up time and time again. Yeah. Um. So this is where things get a little bit like. They, they, they take a weird turn so like he goes from like doing all the intelligent and you know super cool like i'm the middle child person to i mean obviously back in those days and still to this day people get bullied in school which is what happened to him surprise surprise ah. um so one afternoon uh back in 1872 um a couple school bullies actually forced Holmes to rub up against a medical skeleton in a um, in a doctor's office like I, I guess it was like a, like a sexual experience for him too so that's kind of what started his fascination with that is not weird like, I feel like that's weird I yeah there's you know, you know how there's a study of Pavlov's dogs with the ringing of the bell and the salivation? Yep. There, like, it sounds like there could have been a Pavlov situation with right? that. Right. Um, also, where did teen boys in the 1800s get access to, a, like, medical doctor's office and just, or skeleton? <laughs> there's a skeleton so anyway it wasn't it wasn't uh, like overly easy to find um like a lot of kids dropped out of school around those days yeah. to help around yeah. the farm and all that help with the money even though they were pro- even though they were wealthy so i'm wondering yeah. if maybe it was like one of those job things and you know of course bullies will find a way to bully true um because I, I, everywhere I looked, I could not find a reason why they forced them. Hmm. Well, I mean, even today, like, not to generalize, but boys will do stupid shit. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like they'll, they'll convince their brothers to ride their bike down this, like, cement ramp. They'll convince them to, like, touch a burning element on a stove like there was a tide pod challenge where kids just <laughs> eat laundry detergent pods so there's our first uh there's our first reference to yeah. <laughs> holmes influence actually holmes bullies influences i guess yeah because so. like from what from what i heard he was um yeah like up until then he had a pretty normal childhood but i mean like interesting he was also what 11 18, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. 11 year olds, yeah. Do some weird shit. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yep, yep. I'm, I'm one of those weird 11 year olds. I'm so bad that I don't even remember what my 11th year was. I don't either. I just, I just suppressed that, I think. Yeah. All I, all I remember from sixth grade was getting jalapeno cheddar chips and chocolate milk from the cafeteria every day. Every day. That was grade six. Oh, shit. Yeah. Grade six. What did I do? I fucking. I got glasses for the first time. I think that's like my big my big thing, and I barely wore them. I wore them for like two weeks straight, and then I was like, meh. Yeah, which which I, you know I gotta. I'm still in those habits. <laughs> okay. Side note: This speaking of glasses, I so I discovered the other day that it's not called stigmatism; it's astigmatism. But I had no oh. idea. So when people said like, "Oh, I have astigmatism," I thought it was I have a singular oh. astigmatism. Yeah, no, I didn't know that yet. <laughs> I learned that today. <laughs> right? Never knew. But you yeah, maybe know. maybe H. H. Holmes had astigmatism. Just one. Just one. Just one. Just a singular. <laughs> that could definitely be it because, like, I mean, like from like 1872 to around like 1878, um, he actually like whatever it was that like clicked inside i guess unclicked inside of his head um he started like trapping small animals and you know like the uh started torturing even like did like instead of i guess it wasn't really torture it was more so like he was performing medical experiments on them yeah yeah bookmark (laughs) bookmarker for a psychopath (laughs) right right Um. I think like that's that's one of the early signs of uh, psychopathic tendencies, right? That yeah. I think like I think wetting the bed is as well. I don't have any information on if he ever peed himself while he slept, but mm-hmm. I think yeah, like obviously wetting the bed when you're like just potty training or like a young kid <clears throat> is normal, but past the threshold of like being that. able to function properly to know to go to the bathroom, right? exactly um but yeah Mm. it's um interesting right i also like from a logical standpoint it makes sense why the fur like one of the first indicators is harming animals because Mm -hmm. it's all about like having an advantage and power over something weaker but why why does it always have to be animals the, like the most purest creatures <laughs> that, on this planet see that's that's what it could be then right like you're taking something yeah. pure and you're corrupting yeah. it and then like i mean on top of that too it is always about like the dominant so i feel like yeah. with these people who do abuse the animals they've oh. overtaken their power right yeah. like they've shown their dominance and then yeah. that slowly will escalate to human, other human life, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. That's sad, sad. Right? Right? Um, even on top of that, too, like during this time. So he was, he was between 11 and, um, 11 and 15, 11, 16. Okay, formative years, puberty. Yep. He was actually in connection to another boy in his neighborhood's death so yeah like like he was a suspect in it um because they were like they were good friends um i think the only thing i could ever find on this was that um uh his friend named tom like there's not a lot on that i could find about tom uh, but apparently they were exploring a, an abandoned house together. And um, I guess Holmes's um, version of the story was that Tom slipped and fell from the top, uh, from the top floor to the bottom, killing himself instantly. Like, like not like suicidal. It was just an accident yeah. and shit. Just fell. Yeah. But, like, uh... I mean... 
it's very possible that with this animal torture and all yeah. of these weird tendencies out of nowhere kind of force him to like experiment with death especially yeah. of a friend or something see if he felt anything exactly yeah like this this was probably his can i get away with it if yeah. i can i'm gonna continue you know like it's it's really interesting to think if at that early age had that happened and they were more suspicious of him would the rest of it not have happened yeah yeah exactly if they like what if he ended up getting charged he would have been screwed exactly or put to death because back in that time period they weren't wanting to charge they were wanting to an eye for an eye but would they do that with like a little kid um i don't know because i feel like and maybe we'll end up talking about this in another episode but i feel like i've read the youngest person put to death was like a 10 year old or something oh shit yeah we'll definitely like, have to oh, explore that we'll have yeah. to yeah 100 percent. we're gonna have to explore into that it might just be like one of those side little tidbits that we do yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but um yeah I, I guess even after that like he was later dropped as a suspect and no charges ever came again accidental death came up yeah um I, it okay this is gonna sound like concerning but it would have I would love to have been a fly on the wall back in this time period or even up to the 1960s, 1970s, before DNA and technology of any kind had advanced right. to, to uh, capture people. Because it, just, A, the sheer amount of serial killers, mass murderers, alone in that whole period is significantly higher than it is today because even cold cases from like 40 or 50 years ago are being solved today yep. from preserved dna like it it just would be really interesting to be able to go back in time or have been in that time and not necessarily like directly witnessed something like that obviously but see how they involved. solved yeah yeah I, I think about that too all the time. I literally think like, like how did they come to the conclusion mm -hmm. that like, I mean, other than like the guy fleeing or confessing clearly, you yeah. know, indicates guilt. But like, how would how would you determine like, oh yeah, like this dude owns this axe, this dude mm -hmm. also owns the same kind of axe, but which exactly. one murdered? I don't know. Exactly. It, it, it's kind of crazy to think about like how how weird our technology for this stuff has advanced within like what the last only only about 20 years too like not even yeah. not even that long yeah like dna testing alone has advanced so much from i think like the 90s to now right um the night in the 90s before codex or whatever it's called they would just have like a blood sample and then the dna and would like match it on those little strips like looking at the at and ct or whatever or yeah. gt whenever the dna is gattaca <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> second second reference there for h.h <laughs> <laughs> um so like yeah i couldn't find too much more on on his childhood it was stuff documented back then was very very touch and go and like we don't even fully know like to the extent of what went on right which it which is unfortunate but also like i also am glad that i didn't have to be in that time area mm -hmm. um but um it got to the point where like uh the next thing that i could find was stuff about like um he took a really big liking to um the loverings i may be butchering that name um uh, but yeah they they had a farm during his teenage years and he fell in love with uh clara 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 yes clara say. clara bell clara lovering <laughs> um 
but like she like she wasn't interested in him at first right like he he just worked on the farm um i'm pretty sure his uh, her dad actually threatened homes like he did not approve of them being together as far as i'm aware uh, i mean yeah i don't think any father in that time period would approve of their daughter being with a farm hand right exactly <laughs> especially like in like but the thing that I don't get too is that like it's not like he his family wasn't wealthy either, right? So that's like, true. So why was he doing all this like what would have been looked at as like lowly work? Right, right. Like maybe again, maybe it's just to help keep the wealth coming in, you know? Yeah. Middle child that's syndrome true. and all that shit. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like. So, like, Clara was kind of, like, not, like, infatuated with him right off the bat either. Like, he worked at it, and, like, there was this one church social that they were all, like, that both of them were attending. And, like, he saw Clara flirting with another man. And, like, he, like, he, like, grabbed him and was, like, like, literally being, like, hey, I'm gonna fucking knock your lights out to the dude and like i get uh, of course cultural differences and stuff like that really impressed clara and she was like yep. "Ooh, darling she's like oh my god Ooh. my this hero guy really likes me <laughs> my hero whereas, yeah whereas now if someone who i wasn't even dating came up and was pressed that i was talking to another dude i'd be like yeah. <laughs> red flag <laughs> right red flag right and then and then like on top of it too being like hey this guy's cute he just he just threatened that other guy that i was talking to and having a good time with but that guy she wanted a ride on that mustache (laughs) yep free mustache rides right (laughs) um (laughs) jesus now i can't you got me you got me on that one Uh, um so yeah, after that, uh, after the confrontation, and she got like all like, Ooh. Um, he actually drove her home, and like, I, the next day he like literally went around telling everyone that they got engaged, like they were engaged that night or something. Whether that's oh whether it's true or not, which I don't think it is. I like I highly no. I highly doubt that that's what it is. That's like when Michael told everyone he was engaged after him and Holly broke up. Right. Oh my god. Right. Wow. When you're making parallels between H.H. H. Holmes and Michael Scott. Oh my god. <laughs> no! Michael Scott's a stra- uh, Scranton Strangler confirmed. You've heard it here yeah. first. Yeah, confirmed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe we can cover some like conspiracy theories on stuff like that too. Like some, I, think th- yeah. I think those would be fun to do as well. Not Because like, Definitely. like I guess those are considered, you know, mysteries. Mysterious. Even despite, even despite having, um, you know, obviously saying that they were engaged the day a- or the night after he, you know, threatened some dude for this girl. Um, they were actually married on July 4th, 1878. Yeah, they got married that day wow. or not that day but like you know wow okay wait july 4th 18 what 1878 do you know when independence day is like the year no i'm not too sure i'm isn't gonna it, google it isn't it 1874 oh yeah well we're canadians so yeah we, exactly. really we just care about july 1st maybe we should like look into canadian canada's uh first serial killer i think that'll be fun Yes. Okay, uh, 1776. So oh, wow. <laughs> we were both way off. <gasps> Only <laughs> off by 100 years. Oh, my God. That's it. The, that, you know. the Americans in the audience are going to be like, you got Independence Day wrong? <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna end up dead. We're gonna be the we're gonna be the serial killers next victims just for that one right there. Yeah. yeah. Come on, the only Independence Day I know about is the one with Will Smith. 
<laughs> it's the only one I care about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good, good boy H.H. H. Holmes and Clara Bell were married. I'm just going to call her Clara Bell. Okay. Um, it, it rolls off the, the tongue nicely. Uh, they were married yeah. on the 4th of July. Yeah, but the first six months of that marriage was kept in secret until until um clara gave birth to robert mudgett what? so he had a kid already wow right right um obviously you know like <laughs> clara's dad did not approve as before like he he was human like i'm pretty sure he um like her family like cut her out of their their family because she started marrying homes that's all speculation i i can't confirm it but i'm pretty sure i read something about that um because they were furious Um, you know how you know how people tell you to like trust your gut yeah i think i think her family probably met this guy and immediately knew something was off oh yeah and because how could you not like there there are so many accounts of like people knowing or meeting serial killers like someone wrote a book about how they knew ted bundy and they were like he was great he was amazing he was super nice but something was weird yep there's that like weird disconnect that you know like you can pick it up and Mm -hmm. like but like still get so disarmed by them that you think that that's just a fluke it's crazy what they can do I know. I like, know. And just like this guy, like H.H. H. Holmes, because he not only succeeded in killing people, but he succeeded in defrauding people and like convincing people to. Not only like regular civilians, like I'm pretty sure he's evaded cops with yeah. his charm. Not just like when he was on the run, but legit, know. you know, like, hey, like, you know, like we've noticed some crazy things going on here what can you do and he's just like i had a mustache well yeah yeah. Yeah. and him with his friend thomas like accidentally dying yep no yeah Yeah. it's it's crazy the like meticulous and analytical mind of like psychopaths and sociopaths right and how everything is a game of chess and everything is a piece that you're going to manipulate to like sway like it's so weird right i've noticed that like like the spectrum of iq on serial killers is either way at the low end and they get fucking lucky Mm -hmm. or extremely high like yeah the only reason why they got caught was because they got cocky yeah like there's no average joe schmo serial killer right right like um i mean we're gonna go into this um later down in episodes but like the zodiac the zodiac was a freaking genius yep i don't yep and well well, i mean we'll go further into detail uh, on a different episode on that because we are both very excited about that one Mm -hmm. um because we're gonna we're gonna have like a bunch of different uh, different episodes with different, not just killers, but we're gonna do like crazy mysteries as well, which is really exciting. Um, we're gonna do it all. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna full send it. <laughs> full send. Full send. Um, like we might. I I, I almost want to like cover like video game kind of conspiracy st- stuff too, right? Like there's like. I know there's some creepy pastas out there with like Ben Drowned. That's a crazy mm-hmm. one. And that has to do with Majora's Mask, one of my favorite video games. Ooh. Um anyway, we should we should probably uh, get back on track a little bit here. <laughs> um so uh so after after, you know, his son was born, um Holmes out of nowhere was kind of like, yo I'm going to school. I'm going to go get my, uh, like, I'm going to go become a a pharmacist or a doctor, right? Yeah. Like, like he's like, let's do this. Like, I got, I got to take care of my kids, my kid and my wife, right? My 
my yeah. my cage um, my cage. so he actually like for a brief time he did a study in vermont um but he was actually like dissatisfied with the school like i don't know if it was if it was him being like fuck this shit you guys are dumb i know more or it, he was actually failing grades and he's just like you know what fuck it but he left after a year um okay uh but like after that he went to uh the university of michigan um where he moved into like the dorm rooms on campus and he actually brought his wife and kid with him in the dorms to live in the dorms like i don't know how it was like back then but like like, I dorms i i mean i've never lived in a dorm but like mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure they're not that spacious no they're so small and if i was living next door to a family and their baby while you're studying for your finals no i would oh i would i would serial go. killer his ass <laughs> <laughs> The plot thickened. H.H. <laughs> <laughs> Holmes was the victim the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, there's some things. So, they actually ended up splitting because of this, but, like, that was, like, almost just, like, a catalyst or, a, like, a side thing. But, like, mm-hmm. the catalyst kind of, like, um, started the issues um Holmes regularly stole bodies from like the science department to like do his own experiments right like I mean like as like as a as a medical doctor you obviously need to be looking at bodies and stuff right yeah but he stole them and like he he performed the same kind of experiments on a dead body as he did with like his small animals and stuff which was fucked <laughs> that's i wonder i wonder if he did anything else because if we take it back to his childhood where he was forced to right rub a dub dub on a medical bone boy <laughs> rub a dub dub on a medical <laughs> bone boy yeah <laughs> that's gonna be our first merch shirt <laughs> but yeah like <laughs> I yeah, he just Ooh. Yeah, there's I don't e- I don't even want to think about what he was doing to those cadavers that he stole because Right. Like the only thing I can think of why he wouldn't do that is because obviously like if he stole them, he might have to return them. Mm, yeah. Or like if he gets like which I mean, he obviously did get found out. Um like if he got caught he didn't want to get traced back to it even though like you know if i mean if they found semen in a body and then he was the one that stole the body they're gonna they're gonna click it to that no matter what they're gonna be like hey holmes did you check this body out of the morning the other day because (laughs) it's fucked literally (laughs) literally yeah i don't don't think i don't as far as i'm aware he didn't because there was no like actual proof to that no plus like you said like that would have made it more likely for him to been caught yeah exactly and um i i think a lot of it actually so uh here's another reason why which i forgot that i wrote down but if if he did this is fucked as all hell Because what he did was he used the dead bodies for insurance fraud to gain more money. And then what he would do is he would sell the fucking bodies back to the, uh, to the university. He would legit sell them back. Wait, so he... So I don't think he would have. No. So the bodies that he stole, he looked up if they had life insurance or or he just or he made them up to be a distant relative who died oh yeah and then after he got the payout for that he held a dead body's ransom and made the university 
pay anonymously to get them back? No, I don't even think he did it as ransom. I think he's like, hey, I've got some bodies here that, um, w like, I could sell it to you guys so, like, our, you know, like, our, our school can have more bodies to look at and examine. And the school's probably like, yeah, sure. But, like, that also brings up the idea of, like, why didn't anybody notice that these bodies went That's missing and then, like, they get it back later? Like, wouldn't they be like, yeah. didn't want to <laughs> Like, wouldn't... Yeah, like, when... That just goes to show also the complete uh, bungling of the university who are getting these, like, cadavers, and they don't even log them. Right. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we're good. We I live. get it. I get it. Oh, my God. Right. Um, well, and the banks, too, because, like, back then, like, you did not need, like, any ID. You didn't need anything like that. You could walk in with that piece of paper and be like, hey, look at that. So, yeah. like, hey, all, this is me. Yep. Okay. All, all it took was probably, like, finding a blank document and writing out a random name. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was insane how low security was there. Ah, uh, see, I... I would love to do something like that back in that day. Like, I always say, if the purge was real and we got to do unlimited crime for 12 hours, I wouldn't be out there, like, beating the crap out of someone or killing someone or mugging someone. I would go to every single gas station and steal the scratch and wins <laughs> and be rich. That's the way to do it. <laughs> so... The fact that it was so easy back then to just be like, hey. It basically was uh, the purge. Katie, uh, this is me. That's me. This, yeah. this name right here, me. Yep. Okay. Here, have $10,000. Yes. Which was like a million in today's Oh, I know. I know. This dude like stole fucking bank. Like, yeah. He was a rich motherfucker not legally Which, but <laughs> yeah but that's the thing is like normally when we're talking about depraved individuals they're usually a product of their upbringing in their environment they usually True. come from not well off homes abusive homes and that like trauma or a brain injury manifests itself into x behavior um this guy came from a great family allegedly there's yeah. there's no reports of it being bad I, I think he was like like his father was like a little bit more like corporal punishment kind of guy but like that yeah. that that was the thing back in the day too right yeah, like that like wasn't that was that was a, it wasn't frowned upon yeah um and he came from like a rich family so it's very interesting as to how he was also money motivated even though he came from money he didn't have to right. worry about money right well, I, I think maybe maybe it was, like, after things got a little bit crazy in his teens with, you know, like, maybe when he left with uh, Clara, mm -hmm. they might have cut him out, too, because her family wasn't as wealthy, right? So That's true. So it, it could have been that kind of motivator. Again, this is just speculation because I didn't find yeah. anything about that. Um, yeah. It's really hard with, like, you know. This old. Pre, pre like, 1920s. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, so, um, after he moved into um, like all of these insurance scams and selling everything back, um, <laughs> he was trying to just get extra money, and he was. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure these are his words. He's throwing himself into his work. Now that sounds like he was doing some sexual, but we all know that. Yeah. We all know that. Uh, so workaholic. <laughs> uh, he's also like he's he's more fraud. He he does more fraud yeah. based stuff. So I don't think any of his kills or anything like that was sexually based. Yeah. Maybe the thing with the skeleton actually deterred him from doing sexual things because, you know, like it may have given him a fascination with death. But that could have been where it stopped, where he's like, no, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to touch that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Got some PTSD shit. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, so like throwing himself into his work and like doing all of this crazy stuff, um, it put a lot of strain on their relationship. Obviously, um, it like but like it started turning. Uh, he started getting physically abusive to Clara, which I mean, like I feel like that's only a matter of time. With him, with, yeah. with him, yeah. Um, where it got to the point where like the their neighbors in the dorms were complaining, like they constantly had to go check on Clara. And once he found that out, they like he was like, "You can't talk to anybody." All of that. I just realized that when you said this, they were still in the dorm at that point. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Right. Ah. Uh, it, it was it was rough like um so they actually so eventually got to the point where she's like fuck this i'm taking the kid i'm going back to my family they're like they're gonna take me back because i'm leaving you basically um and that was the end of clara she got lucky she did not actually end up dying to homes yay but she they she is i guess she's still technically married to him they never finalized the divorce oh. they, she just up and left she's like fuck it good and i guess i guess in that time too like divorces were so frowned upon that she probably would have rather have been like he died yeah you know. go go um commit some more her own insurance fraud yeah <laughs> Because you know what? I almost guarantee you that he probably went out of state and did that. Probably. He, he probably said that she died and like went to a different state for it. Yeah, he probably said his kid died too. Yeah. I went, I went, I went. For a buck. Right? Exactly. Um, so, like, and the craziest thing is that, like, despite all of this, he was passing his courses. Like, so wow. he's being abusive. He's like doing a shit ton of money fraud and here he comes in and he's like mm, straight age bitch i don't think it was straight wow. A's, but like no i i know he was at least passing and he like you know what they say c's get degrees yep yep exactly <laughs> so like he was going to graduate until until they almost withheld his diploma because he promised marriage to um, a widowed hairdresser. What? Oh my yeah. lord! So I I don't I don't know what I can't remember what I read for the school rules, but like I guess oh. in like like the school was withholding it because he had an open engagement or something like that. I I can't remember what happened, but I think at the wow. end. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, he broke off the engagement so he could get his degree. I that I, I again that might be what a complete, weird time, right? I mean, like that could be completely incorrect. Mm -hmm. Um, that's again another speculation thing. But I think, I think basically what happened was like, hey, like open open engagement. You're not no degree. You, yeah, you're either you either got to be single, or you got to be married. No in between. Fuck you. <laughs> oh my god. Right? But uh, yeah, again, he he I mean, he still ended up getting the degree. Yeah. He probably wonder... he probably talked his way out of it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he never even after he got his degree, he never married the widowed hairdresser? As far as I'm aware, he did not. Good. I mean, it could be very possible. You another another girl who made it out who dodged right. a bullet right, got so fucking lucky. Yes. Um, but yeah, after uh, after after he graduated, he got all of his shit together. Um, he got his his like scams got like way more complex. I feel like they were already pretty complex on their own, but like they got like like forgery fraud, um like fraudulent real estate um oh like oceans 11 level yeah like he even claimed to have a cure for alcoholism yeah did he say what it was no 
It was probably snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, but I think he all. I I think it was um. Oh, fuck, what was it? I I can't remember. Uh, I think I did read what it was. Like it might have been huh. like, you know, you know, Sweeney Todd's piss and ink. <laughs> yes. I don't think it was piss and ink, but probably coca-cola or something because there's cocaine yeah. in that right it, it it probably had something to do with like alcohol itself you know like jägermeister jägermeister but yeah <laughs> but that's medicinal yeah it's medicinal it's medicinal i swear <laughs> uh but yeah so like they started like i mean obviously the more you do it people are gonna catch on yeah. so like he he fled down he fled down i would too and that is the start of when he dropped the name herman mudget moved to chicago and became h h holmes boom boom all right so with that with the, like with his early life up to um going into chicago we're going to take a little bit of a break from our uh, main story here to talk to you about a little bit about us. Give a little yeah. mis- mystery. Uh, mystery. So normally what we'll do is we'll only have two stories. Uh, our main story, which would be like either a huge serial killer or a major like mystery that was unsolved murder. Um, and then, like, a mini story on top of that, something that we won't go, like, overly huge into details, like, stuff like UFOs, kind of things like that. Unless unless you guys do, of course, want us to do an episode more dedicated to that, which, of course, we will. We'll always listen to our viewers. Um, but for our first episode, what we we're going to do is we we're going to give you a little bit of uh, spooky mysteries about us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so both of us have picked some crazy stuff that happened around us or in our lives. And this is actually our first time hearing it. Like we kept these secret from each other. So like our reactions and stuff are going to be fucking real. they to be genuine. 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 All right, Katie, you want to, you want to start us off? You want to, you want to, yeah. you want to shock me to my core? I'll try. All right. So, I'll set the scene. It's last year. Um, oh, shit. Recent. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, this around this time last year, um, one of my grandpas passed away. And about a few days after I found out, um, I was sleeping at home in bed. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing, like, crashing and banging in my house. And I live with my other set of grandparents. And they're, they're night owls. So I, I didn't think anything of yeah, it. Yeah, you I just was thought like, they were, like, cooking or... Yeah, you know. yeah. You know, they... I was like, okay, they had, had a little too much vino, getting up <laughs> from the couch, getting a snack, dropped a bowl on the ground, whatever. Um... And the next day, I was like, why, like, why were you up so late? Like, what were you doing? You were so loud. I had to work this morning. Yeah. And they were like, we were in bed. Like, we went to bed at 11. And I was like, oh, okay, shit. weird. And, and I didn't think anything of it because I also, like, my house is all hardwood flooring. So you can really hear when the house settles. Yeah. Um, so all the, all anything- the creaks and moans. Yeah. Um... And then the next, like, the following night, same thing. I heard crash, boom, bangs. And I was like, hey, this is, like, shut shut up. <laughs> and then the same thing. They were like, oh, we weren't making noise. We weren't you know, doing we anything. Were yeah. And then I was like, okay, weird. Uh, and then the third, the, the following night. Um, so this was all in a row. This wasn't over a course yeah. of, like, a week or anything. This was, like, no, back th- to back to back. Yeah. Oh, shit. And then the third night um more banging but i didn't wake up but brandon did and um uh i i get woken up and 
you know how sometimes when you look into the far corner of your room you like see a silhouette or something and you freak yeah. yourself out but then your eyes adjust and you're like <laughs> it's, it's, my a, laundry. it's a sweater yeah um so i wake up and i i'm just like it's just my grandparents or the house settling it's whatever um, and then I turn and look at my door because if the hall light is on, I know my grandparents are awake and the hall light was on. So I was like, okay, this banging mm -hmm. is my grandparents for sure this time. But when I looked at the corner of my room, I, I saw the figure thing and I was really, really freaked out. But then I was like, no, Love. like be logical. It's just, it's just shadowing, whatever. And then I did the, you know, like rubbing my eyes. Let it like, adjust. Blink, blink, blink. Get it all set. Yeah, yeah. And still, it was there. And I was like, okay, well, I also am not wearing my glasses. Yeah. So I put my specs on, and it's like it's there, and it moved oh. like it moved a bit closer to me. And then I was like, oh fuck, oh shit. I'm going to die. Like, what the fuck? And um, I I was just, like, freaking out. And it, it was one of those things where you're like, well, I'm not going to get up and leave my room and walk past this. Yeah. But we're also, like, having a stare off in my corner. And I'm <laughs> like... And uh, fun fact about me, when I am scared... Uh, I have a go-to song that I just sing. For some reason, it helps. Coping don't mechanism. know why. Yeah. Don't, don't know how this song came to be, but I've done it since I was a kid. And so I just, like, slowly pulled my comforter over my body, and I was like, my loneliness. <laughs> At least it's not Baby Got Back. <laughs> Spears song and I was like I sang myself to sleep and then the next day I was like that's cool and then and then I started thinking like what if like what if that was my grandpa like it just it seemed too spooky and coincidental to not yeah. be yeah he come like, in to check up on you and you know yeah yeah <laughs> and could you imagine I, just like your grandpa being like, "You're sleeping." Hi. Yeah. Are you, you're sleeping. You, do you feeling like like you're gonna have a good dream? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, grandpa. <laughs> um, but it's really it's really interesting because like obviously I felt scared, but I didn't feel like m in like, danger. Malevolent. Yeah, yeah, I didn't feel malevolent. So I was just like. What the fuck? I can't explain this kind of thing. Yeah. And then as a kid, when I uh, was living with my parents, I had a really bad day and I was curled up in bed and I was really sad and crying. And then I was curled up in the fetal position and I felt what I thought was my dog coming to comfort me. Like I, I felt the bed move and I felt them curl up yep. behind my knees. And then I go to, like, pet what I think is my dog, and there's nothing there. And I'm like, oh, ooh, ooh. what the fuck? So, like, that happening years ago, and, like, years and years and years ago, my dad passed away. And then my dad's dad was the one who passed last year. Yeah. So, like, these two completely separate, a decade apart incidents, I'm like, hmm interesting it's only it's only the paternal side that's spooky i guess <laughs> <laughs> well, maternal can can go wherever they they choose to but like the paternal yeah. side's like hey do you do, <laughs> yeah. do, do you want some do you want some sleep too bad yeah do you want to sleep nay nay too bad <laughs> i'm gonna scare <laughs> you but it's only because i'm looking after you yeah yeah like, i'm gonna scare the hell out of you but i'm i'm here and i won't bite <laughs> Yeah, it was it was spooky. Yeah, I, no kidding. I definitely was like that would send chills way up my spine. Like I think that would go like into my skull and just radiate the entire time because I was like, <laughs> like yeah, especially like having I, a stare off. I've never experienced like 
like a um what are they called an not an app uh, yeah an apparition yeah yeah i've never experienced that so having a stare off at one i'd be like yeah, I, I was just like and then to Sorry. feel and then to feel something too like like literally feel like it's a dog yeah. at the back of your knees oh my god yeah that's i was like huh. hi you know i'm sad there's nothing more. <laughs> now I'm more sad. <laughs> yeah, now I'm more sad. <laughs> uh, What's yours? Well, well, you're just gonna have to wait for our next little break. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll we'll dive back into uh, we'll we'll d- dive back into H H Holmes here. I think. Come on in. The water's fine. It's not. <laughs> Fine. There's some blood in there. Oh, yeah, that's a song. There's some blood in there, or coming. It's there's, fun. No, there's some uh, blood in the blood in the water. Blood in the cup. Mm-hmm. Blood in the cup. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not a pee cup. <laughs> um. All right. So where we last left off, um, he just moved to Chicago. He was like down on his fucking luck because his scams were like you're too complex we're figuring shit out yeah um so around 1885 so like that's what five years uh no 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 no. uh seven years seven years after he started school yeah um, he got a job working in a pharmacy, which is actually, um, good for him. Like, like that's, that's what he wanted to do. Right. So like, his mm, life around. fucking dream job right there. Oh. But like, you know, he didn't turn his life around for too long. He lived happily ever after. Just kidding. Right. Um, <laughs> so like the, the people he started working for randomly disappeared. Leaving, oh. leaving the pharmacy to guess who? Mr. H.H. H. Holmes. That so, was really nice of them. Right? Uh, wow. It was, it was only, ru- it's only rumored that they were actually his first victims because he said that they moved to New Orleans. Mm. I, that I, I don't believe. I think, I think nope. they are his first victims. Yeah, yeah. they, they didn't move to New Orleans. They moved to the other, the, no. the other side. Exactly. Exactly. And like Holmes is a person who will take advantage to get himself further in life. Yeah. He, he he is the person who will make those scams. So what's stopping him from being like, Hey, I need this scam to really go through because I've been catching up. What if they actually were gone? Exactly. And another thing is you know, two two times anything happening twice in a row coincidence yep anything more than that and it's a pattern and right right, like right off the bat him as a kid with his bff tom and the animals and the frauds with the bodies at the university like you know they didn't move no they didn't move no exactly exactly and like um it it was just crazy because like through his pharmacy too his pharmacy quote unquote sorry i didn't mean to hit the mic (laughs) (laughs) um my uh um he was talking about how um oh my god i'm just gonna cut this part out because like i lost my train of thought (laughs) (laughs) um so once he got his pharmacy uh, his pharmacy Mm -hmm. um he actually had enough wealth to purchase the rest of the little little building it was a nice three-story building with um yeah shops on the bottom and kind of empty stuff up top which we'll get to later on what he did with it but this is where he started creating his house of horrors, aka the murder castle. Ah, we've made it. We we made it. We, we did made it. it. 
we did it. <laughs> so, like, during this time, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Winchester house, how, like, she constantly, like, hire, hired and fired different construction crews because they weren't doing things right or they were refusing to do stuff. So, Holmes kind of did a similar thing where he constantly hired and fired construction crews because, one, he didn't want to know, like, he didn't want anybody to know the full schematics other than himself. So that, you know, he could do his, like, weird sneak around, you know, pit pocket, you know, decide who dies that day. Uh Um, But, like, he also refused to pay. He, 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 yeah, he refused to pay wages. And, like, people would get pissed off and obvi- for obvious reasons, but he... he um, That's always... how the rich stay rich. Right? Right? Exactly. He basically just, you know, he, he didn't even charm or lie his way out of it. He just flat out refused. He's like, nah, I'm not paying for you for it. Fuck you. It's like, this wall is shit and I hate it. <laughs> I'm gonna get a new crew. New crew. To, yeah, to fix your mistakes. Right? I'm surprised he didn't just kill the crew members once they did what he wanted. Like, I, I, well, I think that would turn him into a mass murderer, and with that many people going missing all at once, all at the same time, it definitely would have raised suspicions. Especially if you know they're probably keeping track of their books, so if they're yeah. if they're gonna know the address where all these guys are going missing. That's true. Plus, I mean, like, what is he, he? What has he got to gain from them dying? Because they can't, he can't, you know, get guess, money yeah. out of it, right? Um, I mean, like, that would have been cool. Just mm-hmm. saying, it would have been cool if he was like, "Oh, cool, he he did this." <laughs> <laughs> Slice. Slice. Uh, so. I, I have a small little breakdown of the of like the murder castle schematics itself. So like the upper floors were like the living quarters with many small rooms. Um, a lot of them were like were like to torture and kill victims, allegedly. Um, it could be it, I think it was rumored, but like he had a way to like sneak in behind rooms and like turn gas on and actually suffocate people through through lack of oxygen from letting gas into their room. Um I think they they even mentioned um again this is all rumors because like none of this was actually like confirmed. Um he had a room that like if you fell from the t- the third floor to the second floor you couldn't get back out. It was literally like a trap room. It was like a saw room. Oh my god. Yeah, and then like he could go in and like like if you had a candle with you or something, you know, like he had like a little hole in the wall that he could like just and blow it out. So like it like it was complete darkness and then like he would seal you off and then like put pump gas in there and stuff too. So you would just get killed. Holy shit! Right, like there, there was some big shit happening there. Um, his main floor was mm-hmm. not only a pharmacy now, but like there was like a general store, um, a grocery store, all that kind of like almost like a little mini mall um, mm-hmm. or a strip mall. That's that's what they're called, mm-hmm. a strip mall. Um, to you know, bring in extra money, right? Although I'm pretty sure he owned all three of them. All three of the little... Yeah. Right? Um, and then when you go down into the basement, either through a small shooter trap door, mm-hmm. um, there was... Um, this is like a place to, where he could dump the bodies. Um, with, he could either burn them in a kiln, which oh. I don't know how people were like, oh yeah, there's a kiln in the basement, you know? Making some meat pies down there. Yeah. Making some pie. I'm making some bowls. You want? <laughs> you want a? You want a pottery? You yeah. want a pottery gift? Okay. Oh, I'm just, I'm just making stuff to sell in my general store. Right. <laughs> That's all I'm looking for. Oh my God! There'd be like guano bowls. Right, and like even in the basement too. Um, 
he, they the police reportedly found like an acid trap and oh. like like torture tables and everything it was crazy um and then he even dug deeper in the um in the basement to a like a deep hole where he would dump his bodies oh wow hole again we, hell. right exactly murder castle needs a hole to hell i mean yeah it does <laughs> every good castle needs every evil layer needs a hole to hell right right exactly <laughs> uh so um after um his multiple multiple construction was complete um, he put out ads in the newspaper offering jobs and housing specifically for young women. Um, he presented himself as a single man looking for a wife. Um, Again. Right? Um, I'm pretty sure he was engaged to a lot of the people there, too. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He throws that around all the time. Clara, <laughs> right? the widow. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, there's even more. Like, uh, I've, I've, I actually cut out, a, I cut out a lot of, uh, the women that he supposedly killed and, uh, defrauded. What a dirty dog. Right? Um, <laughs> the funny thing too is with everybody that like came to live in his like little hotel apartment living situation, we're required to take out life insurance policies. And guess who the benefactor was? Oh, him, of course. Yep. It had to be him. Why uh, was that not a red flag? I mean, he, red f Everyone was colorblind back in the day, <laughs> I guess. Right? Like, I think it was literally, like, people, like... I think this is kind of where, like, the whole, like, trying to live free was coming yeah. into fruition where everybody's like... I don't want to be part of my parents' lives. I need to go explore the world. Let's go to Chicago. <laughs> Chicago! Right? right? Let's just fucking do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, of, of course, after all these premiums and, you know, life insurance policies were signed to him, a lot of these women would, uh, fiancés, wives... Even just regular employees would, would go missing. They're just gone. Out of existence. No surprise. Uh, maybe they all did go to New Orleans. I mean, there's two medical... Yeah. Or two pharmacists down there already, right? They're creating a commune. Of, like, H.H. Just... Holmes BFF commune! He's just, the, he's just the fucking recruiter for a cult. That's all it is. Yeah, that's it. He has a timeshare down in New Orleans, and everyone goes there and takes turns having it. Right, exactly. But no, but nobody comes home. Yeah, exactly. They just they just yeah. enjoy it so much that they have to they they have to stay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would. Yeah. Um. So it it actually started getting reported to the point where um people would actually see women go into the castle. But would never, they would never come out. Yeah. Maybe I, that. Maybe they were ghosts. <laughs> maybe. The more I look at this guy, like I was just looking really closely at his like faded ass photo that he looks so burnt out and hammered. Right. He looks like a little rat. Right. Like he has very rat like features. Right. I agree. Like he's just, he's weirdly like. It's got that the the pointy nose and like the yeah. just the I I really want to see him without a mustache. I do too. Like I I I I, I think after the episode I'm gonna have to search it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna oh. see if I can find one. Oh my gosh! If one doesn't exist, we should Photoshop that photo and his mustache out of it. Right. I would have to find a way to. You know, I, I I I I would try and do it. I don't know how good it'll look, but I'll, I'll try and do it. Um, so, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, lots of people would see people enter and never leave. So, okay. So, I already kind of went into the whole, like, first floor were the stores. Uh, other floors were living homes. And, like, um, 
even Holmes's office where he like apparently he had like listening devices or like stuff was like soundproof so you couldn't hear him but he could hear you and all that stuff so like he like he, he basically had surveillance before surveillance yeah it was crazy like he was he was not not ready for that shit or he was not ready to like let people be like independent <laughs> no um, not at all yeah but like yeah again I had, there were peepholes trap doors um yeah okay yeah no those were the tables that i was there was a dissecting table and a stretching rack on in, in the basement Ooh. right on top of a fucking crematory no right no, uh, no thank you <laughs> human laffy taffy anyone right like uh, a sound like from what i heard uh, like what's rumored is he would actually like kill them throw them down the chute dissect them like you know like you know he's a doctor he's gonna check that shit out you know Mm -hmm. um and then strip them of their flesh and then sell the skeletons to medical schools Again, this is rumored, but like, could you ima- could you imagine like? Do, do the medical schools back in the day just not at? Where did this come from? I found it. <laughs> I I just I found it under both. Yeah, like what? But I, th- I I think a lot of it too was he probably knew how to like polish it up, so it mm. looked like one of those like fake, real skeletons. Yeah. And I even think. Yeah. Th- I imagine back in the day they probably used actual real skeletons. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I just, yeah, like, I wonder if they'd question where he got it. Right? Like, yo, this dude keeps bringing in skeletons. Should we right. ask where they're coming from? No. No. But just, we, we, we need we need it. We're, we're on a budget right now. <laughs> like, I, I, I think his, like, medical degree probably, you know, took some suspicion off of that. But like, still, yeah. <laughs> like, still, that's still fucked up. Yeah, uh, you're like, dude. If a farmer was bringing him in, I'd say that's weird. Yeah, but he didn't, it's a doctor. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't do that for like every victim. Yeah, he had to like chose ass in order to bury them. Um, but like, th- there's a few that got sent out for money. You know? mm. uh, Always money hungry. Exactly. And that's why I want. That's really why I want to search up who the Hart brothers were. Yeah. Because like I, I'm kind of interested to see how Holmes is less. Um, less depraved. Or he's more, more known, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Because like the Hart Hart brothers, they were, from what it sounds like, they were, um, money motivated serial killers before Holmes so did Holmes maybe get some inspiration from them and do it better I I don't know I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take a look into it America's first (laughs) one-upper that could definitely be it yeah first one-up killer (laughs) um so uh during this time um for some reason i did not write down the date and i don't know why let me see if i have it online here uh no okay no i did not write it down that's unfortunate um i'm not sure when chicago was given the honor of hosting the world fair the world fair i can look it up quickly chicago world fair I think it was like um, probably what about 18... 1893. There you go. There's there's the date right there. Um, so this was like a cultural social event celebrating the 400th anniversary of that scumbag Christopher Columbus discovering America. Discovering America. He, he discovered it really good. Discovered it. Ugh, it... Discover this. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. It, people who are listening to audio only are going to be so confused by that. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, what? 
be like, listen to what? They'll just hear. I, I didn't even pick it up on my end. <laughs> oh, no. Whatever. It was a punch. It was a punch right audio. to the hand. It was a punch. So there you go. Um, so, yeah. Chris so... Colum, bitch. Sorry, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, so of course Holmes took full advantage of this I mean uh, why wouldn't he at this point right Yeah, people so, from all over the world who easily could stay in Chicago being taken by its wonders being king right exactly yeah. and uh, like you know obviously there are people looking for places to stay and then and never be seen so again happy. Yep, he just so happens to have just a place. That, just that one room. <laughs> um, but of course, like, even... Um, especially after Chicago finished up with the World Fair, um, they... Like, the city itself took a massive economic downturn. Because, you know, obviously yeah. people were only there for the fair. Yep. So, this obviously also affected Holmes himself because now it's going to be a little bit harder. So, um, he started traveling the U S even though he did do this while still operating his murder castle. He did this more often now because, you know, Chicago wasn't as viable. So this is where he more came into more scams than murder potentially. Oh. So he was, um, he was, uh, mainly doing his normal stuff, like making fake insurance, making fake, uh, death certificates, you name it. Um, you name it, he did it for a dollar. Right. And we're gonna, we're gonna start talking about his partner in crime and the mm -hmm. eventual downfall of Mr. H.H. H. Holmes here, because this is where he met Mr. Benjamin Pietzel. I yes. always want to. I, yes. I always want to say pretzel. Like a Benjamin pretzel. Who's the creator of the pretzel? That's definitely not true, but it's pretzel. Um, pretzel. So, on top of that, like as soon as he started meet, uh, scamming with pretzel, where they were both claiming uh, different ex scams for each other and helping each other out. Um, he still did actually do a few murders. He didn't do as much as he was. Um, but, like, during during this time, he stole a few, like, super valuable horses in Texas, shipped them to St. Louis to sell them. And then on top of that, he, like, like he made a shit ton of money. He went ham with that fucking cash. Um... But it was quickly figured out, and he got caught. He yeah. He went to jail. That's what you get for stealing horses. Right. The animals coming back into play. Yeah, coming, right. getting his ass busted. Yep. The big, the big guy, the big animals are the ones that are people's downfalls, apparently. Oh, how the turntables. <laughs> Oh God, we're, we're listeners are gonna quickly realize how much office references we are we're both gonna make. I'm I'm excited for it. Me too. And if they don't like the office, well, get out of town. Ask. Get out of Chicago. Maybe go to Chicago in 1880. Whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah, go there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like I mean, even while he was in jail, he was scheming like a motherfucker. You know, he's at this point. It's at this point. It's not even a habit. It's a necessity for him, right? It's yeah. It's second nature. Right. He's just ah. he's set. I'm just picturing this jet like a playpen at a daycare because he he was able to scheme in jail. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, like I I from what I understand, I don't think it was like a high security prison. Even no. I think I think even back then high security wasn't even that much um but like um he actually hatched a plan with um his cellmate i'm gonna butcher the name here uh marion hedge pets 
hedge pit. Hmm. Um, okay. Basically, like, he was serving a different kind of sentence. Um, but Holmes told him that he was going to take out a life insurance policy for $10,000, fake his death, and then uh, Hedgepeth would uh, be provided $500 in exchange for a lawyer who could help him if any problems arose. So basically, he was going to make it look like he died in jail, I'm pretty sure, have Hedgepeth, you know, confirm it and everything. And in return, after getting that insurance money, he was going to send him literally $500 of $10,000. That's that's a, first of all, in that kind of day, that's a shit ton of money. Yeah, but Fi- that's a small chunk. Yeah. Out of the big pie for that yeah. guy's work. But I mean, on top of that too, like five hundred dollars in that day is still a lot as that's, well. That's true. So I what the con- I'm gonna look up what the conversion would be. Right. Um. And while while you do that, I'm gonna keep keep kind of going on here um so he got released oh no he sorry he didn't die in jail my bad uh he was released on on bail uh the plan backfired and refused the bank refused to pay due to suspicions of fraud so he did not think that one out too well oh yeah no yeah also Uh, it was equivalent to fifteen thousand dollars for ten thousand or for five hundred holy shit yeah. $15,000 in today's market. Holy fuck. Yeah. Wow. Just just to say, hey, that guy's dead. Now I want to know what 10000 is. Do it. Do it up. Um, so with with the whole, like, backfire. Oh! $292,000. Wow. Holy shit. I'm just going to wow. go fake my own death now. Okay, cool. Yeah, BRB <laughs> going to commit insurance fraud so I can be rich. <laughs> right i'm gonna i'm gonna claim it all it's all me it's all me five hundred dollars going to nobody (laughs) um so hopes actually attempted this uh again but he actually wasn't going to or he was going to fake his death again but (laughs) this time he was going to use Pietzel as a, as help. Oh. Make H.H. H. Holmes look like the body, but it's actually fake Pietzel. Or it's fake H.H. H. Holmes as Pietzel. Okay. Here's the kicker, though. Pietzel wasn't getting up. He actually killed Pietzel. Wow. So this is actually his complete... Um, this is his actual only confirmed murder thus far. Confirmed. Wow. Everything else is, is very rumored and we're not entirely sure. Uh, but he for sure killed his partner in crime. Yep. Um, wow. Right? And collected what? every cent for himself. He also took out a life insurance on Piazzo, so got even more money. I don't understand his his logic. Deep, yeah, and his deep seated motivator being money because right? he had so much. I think they okay. So I think they were middle class, but it's not like they they weren't. They you weren't know, hurt. They they weren't poor. Yeah. They 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 had enough to survive, and I think maybe that is what got H H Holmes to think. Well, I want more than just survival. I want want to thrive. Right. Dirty, flirty, thriving. I want it. (laughs) Give it to me. Um, So, like, during this time, like, obviously, like, you know, H.H. Holmes started to panic now. Because Mm -hmm. Pietzel isn't just a person who can disappear like a lot of the people that he was killing potentially already. Yeah. Like, he had three kids and a wife. The craziest thing about this, too, is he actually convinced Piazza's wife to let him uh, 
or he convinced her that uh, he went into hiding in order to make sure that the scam can go through. So she she must have been on in on it at, to some extent. Yeah. But Whoa. right. And here's another thing too. Like he convinced her to let him take her children on his travels. Uh, I would like to CPS. Hi, I would like to report. <laughs> I got some... an, wow. I got an Amber Alert ready for you. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um. So I mean, like, also at this time, I know that. Um. Like, obviously, like. I don't think the FBI was created back then, but like the 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 higher agencies and stuff, right? Like, yeah. police everywhere were catching on to Holmes. Uh, because like you know like things were yeah things were progressing right and yeah they sadly figured out too little too late like you said that he just is like, evil he, yeah exactly wow so unfortunately for uh the piezel children none of them oh. ended up surviving wow they were all found stuffed in trunks in Toronto. He went all the way up into Canada. Wait. Yep. What a prick. Yep. How how were they found all the way in Toronto? So um Hedgepeth being yeah. pissed off that Holmes did not deliver on that five hundred dollars ratted him out on his plan. Yes in the, I, I think he I think he did it in exchange for Immunity. For, or not even immunity. I think it was just a reduced sentence. Oh, that um, ain't fair. Right? So, eventually, the police found him on a train, trying to, you know, trying to get out of town. Trying uh, to run away. Right? Um, and they found him. They got him. Um, so, he got convicted of the four murders. Good. Oh. During wow. his arrest, though, he confessed to a total of 28. Wow. However, people still believe to this day that is upwards of 200 people. I don't Dang. necessarily think it was that much. I think no. that's I think that's a little far-fetched, but like still 28. Yeah. 28 where yeah. he confessed. Um, I think There's... he rec- I also think he recanted a few. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he like there's even been uh evidence that he was actually jack the ripper oh yeah spent some time in europe yeah well maybe if he wasn't in his murder cast murder castle he wasn't or he was off in england doing some naughty things however wow i think i don't think holmes is jack the ripper i'm putting that out there because jack the ripper was very sexually motivated. Oh, Holmes and... is almost exclusively uh, money. Money. Yeah, and Jack the Ripper primarily went after women of the night. Yep. And was very, like, blazing and yeah, he, violent. He, he, he went after poor women, which does not yeah. fit. It doesn't fit Holmes's MO. I don't think it was yeah. I, I, I think it's a cool theory, but I don't think it's... I don't think it was. I'll double down on that. Conspiracy theory busted. <laughs> don't think it's him. Busted. Get busted. Busted. Get busted, bro. Um, and I think you're the one who found this one. Um, as being the first serial killer being hanged, his final request was he wanted his oh. casket buried in concrete. To prevent grave ra- robbers from digging up his grave. So this motherfucker wanted to hold on to his riches even after death. Yeah. He was like, dig me a 10-foot <laughs> grave and put me in there and then cover my grave and my coffin with cement on the bottom and then all around it so people can't fuck with me. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but people fucked with him. Yep. People fucked with him. People fucked with him. Um, His own family. Exactly. And we'll get more into that after my little spooky stories. 
Yeah, spooky, spooky. All right. I, like I said, I've never seen an apparition, and I've mm -hmm. never felt anything. Okay. I've I've heard some crazy things, and um, I've there's just I'm the same way as you. I try and logic this out. I logic this out as much as I possibly can until I can't figure out what it is. And there's only been two to three times where I haven't actually been able to figure things out. So I used to live on my grandparents' uh, farm, and they had, like, an older house that they used to live in. Um, and back to his kids, we were, we were, we were those, those lovely idiots that were like, let's play with Ouija boards. Oh, God. Not, not even, not even, like, authentic Ouija boards. We made them ourselves. So, like, they were, like, <laughs> they, they, if you believe in that stuff, they were not safe in any matter of a sense. Uh, um, so, we were talking on this Ouija board, which I'm pretty sure, like, for the most part, my sister and my cousin faked a lot of the responses and stuff, which, I mean, they're going to do that for for spooks and scares. But, like, we, we definitely attracted something to that old farmhouse because um, years later, um, I want to say it was about four or five years ago, um, I was living out there on my own, and my one cousin, she would come and hang out periodically. So she was there for the week, um, and I, um, I was doing a hosting job. So I was um, getting up early. Um, I wasn't even getting up early. Like I worked at eleven thirty, and it took me fifteen minutes to get to work. So I was like, I can sleep till ten, no big deal, and then I can get ready. I woke up at eight in the morning, my back, my back to the wall, or back to the door, and um, I don't know if people will be able to hear this, but all of a sudden. On my door, I hear in that sequence. I'm like, interesting. Like, why is my cousin coming up and knocking on my door? Like, she sleeps later than I do. This is crazy. She shouldn't do it. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go back to bed. That's all I need to do. I need to go back to bed because, like, I'm tired. I want to, you know, have some rest for the work. I hear the same sequence, the dun dun, dun dun, dun, a little bit louder. A couple minutes later, I'm like, "What is wrong with my cousin? Like, why is she doing this? Like, you know, like at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm up a little bit and I'm a little concerned, but I haven't heard her say like, Carter, Carter, get up, like I need your help or something like that. So I'm like, I'm gonna pretend that I'm just in a deep sleep and try and get back to sleep. All of a sudden, but like. So during that time, like, I rolled over to see the door, right? Because I was, like, checking for, like, you know, the shadow of the feet. Um, and the third time that this happened, I, like, it was a very thin door. And I saw the door shake each time it went. It was boom, 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 boom. And each time it literally rattled my door. And I was like, okay, she best be fucking dying like she's she's in need of an emergency to be knocking that fucking loudly and i was like you know what fuck okay i got up i opened the door like i swung it open because i was kind of mad that i wasn't gonna get to sleep early i yeah. opened it up and nobody's there and i'm like okay that's odd like that's that's really weird to me because it being an older house I can hear the squeaking of the floorboards. It's not like, like this house is like from the 20s. So it's, it's creaky as fuck. So I'm, so I'm like, okay, you know what? Fine. That's fucked up. But I'm up now. So I'm going to, I'm going to do like a little extra long routine to get to work. You know, like actually have a nice long shower, you know, like do my hair make it all make myself look all lavishy for you know the <laughs> the restaurant business that you know yeah. treated me so well um, <laughs> so as i'm walking towards the bathroom which is adjacent to my cousin's bedroom where she was sleeping um on the opposite side there's a kitchen and i have to pass the kitchen in order to get to the bathroom and 
in the middle of my walk over and granted it's like a 15 step walk um and sorry for any uh people who hate asmr all i hear is i'm over here from the kitchen i'm like fucking forget that shit i am not going or i'm going into work early they're not nobody else is even there but i am going to work early fuck that um and like it, i got rattled obviously oh my god yeah i got Ooh. rattled to the point where like like i came home and i was like mackenzie i have to tell you about this because this is so fucked up because like i i had to confirm one i had to confirm that it wasn't her trying mm -hmm. to fuck with me and two i was again genuinely freaked out so yeah like oh. Oh. and then on top of that too she's like that's crazy that you said that because like after you left i woke up maybe like an hour or two later and i heard literal screaming outside like right outside my window it was crazy like i didn't i, I can't explain it Nope, 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 right. nope, 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 nope. Right. Most of the other stuff I can confirm of being like old, old house vibes and stuff like yeah. house settling. But um, the whispering. Oh yeah, that one got me. Ah, uh, that is evil. Uh, right. Right. Well, oh my god! Like at least mine was like spooky, but hopefully like benevolent oh that's right. malevolent shit right my uh i i talked to my grandparents about it like maybe a month or two later and they're like oh no or no not even i talked to them the next day and they're like no no that that those were hunters i was like a hunter would not rattle my door like hunter like gunshots I'm over here. <laughs> it's actually the deer they're like i'm over here yeah. you're not gonna get me <laughs> oh my god right oh, yuck right um it just yeah i i got to the point where i was like i i can't explain it i'm freaked out um the only other time that i got spooked in that house legitimately like where i could not explain it was when me and uh my partner we were we kind of had like a like a mini spat like it wasn't like a it wasn't an, a fight but it was more of like a disagreement like where we were just like okay like let's let's sleep it off and like you know deal with everything later and all this and i left the door the same door wide open because <laughs> pretty much any time after that i slept with the door open um Fair. but we didn't turn on we didn't turn on netflix we didn't like we weren't watching a movie or anything um and we're just laying down and all of a sudden we hear footsteps creaking we're the only ones in there for a fact we were the only ones in there and as soon as that happened I, I looked over at my partner and i was like hey i'm gonna go turn on the tv i'm gonna shut the door and we're just gonna pretend we didn't hear that and they were like yep yep agreed let's do it oh my god um so that was the farmhouse this last year i think it was just over a year ago uh when i was living um in my trailer uh, i was home alone i was i was actually streaming and um i i was playing my games and i heard my doorknob jiggle like you know like the little so while i was while i was streaming i overheard that i was like hmm partner's not home maybe like maybe they got home early maybe i'm able to actually like you know like like they maybe they were like gonna come in check out like hey oh wait he's streaming okay i'm gonna go back yeah. but the door never opened and it being a trailer there's not a lot of places to hide so like i was like hmm, yeah. this is weird so i opened the door like I, I swung it open um i look around there's nobody there i'm like okay odd so i i even yelled out and i yelled out their name i was like hey you here sent them a quick text like are you home um and then i'm like looking around i'm, I'm looking in all these like places like there's not a lot of places to hide mm -hmm. so i'm i'm looking around just in case someone like tried to you know break in um 
couldn't find anything couldn't find anything missing like because i feel if someone was going to open the door and um take stuff they would have tried to at least take something before yeah, they realized they, someone was home yeah they so, wouldn't have gone through all that effort and then just right not right like i as far as i'm aware i think it was on on an they were not aware that I was home. If it was a break in, mm-hmm. they found out and then were like, hmm, gotta go. But I, of course, with a trailer, it's small, thin walls. So I would have heard the door yeah. slam. Or, yeah. right? My cats would have been like scathed. They would, they would have been like, yo, what the fuck? That's true. But they, they were both sleep, or all four of them at the time were sleeping. And nothing went awry so i after after my partner was like yeah no i'm i'm still away from the house i grabbed a knife and i just put it on my desk i was like fuck that like if if it is if it is an invasion of fuck that i ain't taking a chance yeah those were the only uh three things that i could not explain whoa oh my god honestly the farmhouse that's a scary movie (laughs) <laughs> That's a screenplay. That's a short film. Right? Oh my gosh. Right? That one was freaky. That that one that, still haunts ooh. me to this day. Yeah, it the whisper. Right? Like Right. Everybody everybody always is like whatever, you know, until I get to the I'm over here. And then they're like mm, mm. They're like, oh, "Okay. Like that's Yep. Ugh. And and again, again, I will try and find. I have goosebumps. Exp- oh shit! I- <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, like I, I I will try. I will try my best to find a rational explanation. And those three instances, aside from a potential incorrect burglary, I cannot explain them. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Hope a good. Knock on wood. Good thing mm-hmm. nothing attached to you. Right, right. Mm. I think it. I think that entity more so attached to the house the itself. House? Yeah. Yeah. I would too if I was a spirit near a farmhouse. <laughs> right. Oh my God, that's right. like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> it just goes together. Right. Right, and I oh. I continued to live in that house for like over a year. I wouldn't have. I would have burned it to the ground. I should have. I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have been like, this house is being cleansed. Exercise it. Cleanse it. Burn it. <laughs> in that order. In that order. Uh, yeah. So those were my spooky spooky tales. So that that guy, hey? Yeah, that the whispering like teetered it over the edge. Yep. Cool. I oh my god, watch tonight. I'm gonna go home and like something's gonna happen. Yeah, I I know. Talking about this stuff always like brings it up, so it's gonna be like it's gonna be like there happening. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. No. And my house will settle, and I'll be like, <laughs> "What's that? Huh? <laughs> Who's that?" <laughs> That's another thing I'll do too. If I just like get overcome with a sudden feeling of uneasiness, um, the one thing I've seen commonly with like hauntings and spirits is you tell it like, "Get the fuck out of here." Yep. So just like, start if yelling. I, yeah, and you're just like go away like leave me alone yep i don't want to be bothered by you this isn't your house you need to leave yeah leave me alone please yep apparently Mm -hmm. there's like apparently there's like this like weird candle experiment that i read about where you're like you light candles by your doors like your like entrances to your house and if the candle um stays lit then there's no entities in your house if it flickers um it's trying to like an entity is trying to come in 
and if it go if like if it won't light or it goes out there's already an entity inside that's not like the full story and like i was paraphrasing that a lot because like i heard about this from a third party so i i didn't do too much research on it but like <laughs> when i heard it when i heard it i was like i need to do this yeah we just google how to tell if there's spirits in the home <laughs> <laughs> how do i know if there is a spirit in this house watch hh H. holmes will haunt us tonight yeah he's coming he's coming with that mustache he's gonna give us some de yeah. deadly mustache rides he's gonna be like hey do you talking shit <laughs> why is why yeah, why is he british i don't know <laughs> I just picture like everyone in that time period to have that refined <laughs> British accent. That's fair. He does look like he would have like the like, right? like the the like nasty like hello. Oh my god, the Cockney accent. Yeah. Like come over to my hotel. Eh? <laughs> you right. won't get married. You won't get married. <laughs> no, a Clara, she's gone. She's dead. <laughs> I swear I'm a nice guy. Don't ask Tom. All the people who get me the pharmacy. <laughs> oh my god. But I um uh, I on my end have little little tidbittle. Ooh. Little tidbittle. Oh, some tidbitties. Tidbitties. Um just just about, you know, how America's first serial killer, which we now know is alive. Potentially, potentially. like again, potentially alive. Th this is the opinion for from someone who wrote the book, which I mean, like, it could very well be true. Yeah. Um. So his his family, um, because we found out earlier during your story that he had a son, um, who ended up having kids. Because of all the shenanigans he pulled, faking his own death for insurance money, even though yep. he was arrested and put to death, um, his his body was exhumed in 2017 to prove that he was dead. Oh, holy fuck. Yeah, so... 2017, his, so literally, like, what? 150 two, years later? Yeah, almost, almost yeah. 200 years later. Yeah, almost 200 years later, his family was like, we should open it. He, should we? He did? Well, yeah, we should. He, he, like, he's, not, he's not in there, is he? Yeah, we'll find out. He was in there. <laughs> uh, so, also, he's buried in Delaware. I don't know why. Delaware? Really? Uh, yeah. I would have expected, like, New Hampshire or Chicago. Right! Delaware. Um... So many books have been written about him, both nonfiction and fiction inspired by him. Yeah. Um, I would say the most recognizable influence in the media that our audience would recognize is um, James March in American Horror Story Hotel. I still have to watch that. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Evan Peters plays James Patrick March, and he is, uh, his character was inspired by H.H. H. Holmes. He builds Hotel Cortez, which the hotel was inspired by the Hotel Cecil, which is yeah. a little crossover. That's fun. That, yeah, that's um, very fun. I started watching that, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, it's fucked. Nah, I know, I know. A tale for another episode. <laughs> exactly right yeah yeah um so the most notable books written about him was the devil in the white city which i was like wait chicago is the windy city why is it the white city um fun fact chicago is the white city because of all the uh like architecture oh. that, that was around um it was a big architectural oh, so that's why they're the city. chicago white Sox. I guess, yeah. Like all, all the architecture that was so beautiful was like this white stone, and then with all of the electric lights refracting against that, oh. it was just the white city. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
um they there was a book called the torture doctor that was written which just the name alone makes me think of uh the doctor from dead by daylight oh. i i have no idea if they're affiliated at all but it would be really cool interestingly enough were. i th i think they actually got inspiration from a chinese doctor who uh did oh. electrotherapy to kids who were addicted to the internet yeah wow yeah ironic that that's a killer in a video game right <laughs> okay um another book is the scarlet mansion which mm -hmm. makes me think of the scarlet letter obviously they have nothing to do with <laughs> each other um but it's interesting that the book is called the scarlet mansion when it's all theory and hearsay if he did actually like kill people in his hotel right <laughs> um and then there's the most interesting thing is in 2017, this is what inspired the exhumation of his body. Um, in 2017, the History Channel aired an eight episode series called American Ripper. Ooh. And it was it was Holmes's great, great grandson, Jeff Mudgett. They and kept he, the name. Holy fuck. Yeah. Didn't didn't. I mean. Part of me can understand why he kept the name because H.H. H. Holmes changed his name. Yeah. So if, unless people really know about H.H. H. Holmes and his real identity, like, I don't think the connection would be made, but yeah. still but interesting. I mean, also at the same time, you're still part of history, too. Like, yeah, yeah, whether, exactly. whether it's good history or bad history. Also, exactly. I, fi I, I find it really weird that you mentioned the History Channel and, like, a, a miniseries and my fucking Netflix goes off. <gasps> H.H. is like, tune in. <laughs> <laughs> tune in this week to see my bones. Uh, um, but yeah, so his great-great-grandson teamed up with a former CIA agent to try and prove that he was Jack the Ripper. Oh. Yeah. And then um, the exposure that that got and te the telling of the story and how he um committed so much insurance fraud and faked his death viewers were like yeah but is his body really there <laughs> like did was did he really die there and that's his body so they his family petitioned to exhume the body and oh test it with new dna testing and see if it was him and it was well, um, no shit <laughs> yeah yeah um okay but is his body like <laughs> is that him Although, okay, actually, you know what? I can see, I can see, after all the shit that he pulled, I can maybe see why people would be like, "Are we sure right? he's actually he actually died there? Yeah. That was him." Yeah. That's fair. Um, and then in 2018, a year later, uh, a writer wrote, um, "Devil's Dreamland," which was horror poetry inspired by H.H. Mm -hmm. H. Holmes. Oh. Um, and yeah, it ended up winning the Bram Stoker Award, which I guess, like, obviously is a really acclaimed horror award. Oh. Um, and then in 2019, a, an adaptation of Devil in the White City, so that book from 2003, that's when it was written, um, they were going to adapt it into a movie with Martin Scorsese directing it and Leonardo DiCaprio starring in it as H.H. H. Holmes. Mm. Yo, um, how come I could see him in that role? Right? How come I can see and, him in that role? And then um, they decided rather than doing a movie, they would do a, TV, a limited series TV show. Ooh. And Leo would team up with Scorsese and they direct together and Leo would star. But it's been stuck in like developmental hell since 2019. Like nothing uh. has come come from it even to this date 2021 nothing's come of it i feel like COVID had a lot to do with that though totally because like i, I, uh, I want to see that shit right um and i it's really interesting how how expansive this guy's influence was like he he died in 1896 i believe it was 1896 I don't know if I actually had that written down. I might not have. Mm, 
Oh, May, yeah, um, a few days before his birthday, May 7th, 1896. Um, so, from 1896, expanding 1975, 1985, uh, 1940, 1986, 74, 2017, 2003, he's all the way up, he's still notorious. Yeah, like, people are still being inspired by him. They're still creating characters inspired by him. There there was a Sherlock Holmes episode. Right, with, we, we talked about that one. Yeah, called The Lying Detective. And it was all about this person who is building hospitals in order to kill patients. And this character in... The episode directly references H.H. H. Holmes as like, yeah, this guy built a murder castle. I oh. wanted to build a murder hospital. Oh, shit. Yeah. You're like opening my eyes to stuff that I need to fucking watch and read. Yeah. <laughs> and this is do. all about one guy. I know, right? That's how influential he is, too. Like, like as yeah. in like as in like a development thing, like not as a copycat thing. Like, fuck that. No. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, this regardless of the time period any any mystery or serial killer it everyone has that morbid curiosity about what what's their motive what's their upbringing why did they do this exactly and especially back in such an old time period where it was the wild west and you could literally get away with murder you could get away with anything yep. hence insurance fraud yeah you know we'll sprinkle some murder in with the fraud <laughs> yeah just just, just a little just sprinkle a little, a little sprinkle add, add a little bit of spice uh, we, we need that salt guy just, just but like hey. let's switch it with like murder the word murder <laughs> a little <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> murder <laughs> wasn't there wasn't there also a supernatural episode that was dedicated yes. to Holmes, like like it was. Yes. it was directly Holmes. Mm -hmm. That was that was yeah. doing the the vengeful spirit thing or whatever. Yes, I forgot about that. Which, which reminds me is like there was that idea. I don't think anything ever came of it, but he, there was this a rumor that he like locked one of his like, um, fiancés in a vault. Because she wouldn't sign papers over claiming, uh, naming him like as, yep, beneficiary. As, yep. So he literally starved her, you know, pretty much suffocated her until she signed, and then mm -hmm. he. I'm pretty sure he didn't let her out. No. And I think they, I think they did a little bit of that in the supernatural episode. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but. My yeah. God. My God, this this dude's fucked. <laughs> he was fucked. <laughs> Good final, ridden. Final conclusion. He was fucked. Yeah. I will say though, for like for that day and age, he was smart as all fuck. Like yeah. this man knew he he knew how to get away with murder. He knew how to get money out of murder. And for the most part, up until um that St. Louis, Texas horse debacle, he was getting oh, away yeah. with a lot of stuff. Like, even though, like, he was, it was slowly catching up to him, but, like, in this day and age, there's no way anybody would be able to get away with that shit. No. As, it, like, his, his friend disappearing as a child, he would have been oh, immediately he... pegged. Right. Right. Immediately. Immediately! Right? All yeah. right. So, I mean, like, I mean, that's my final thoughts on Mr. Yeah. Mr. Uh... Mr. Mudget. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mudget. <laughs> it would be really interesting to have the opportunity to talk to his family members. Right. And and just get their take on it. Not right. not even necessarily not, in not an like interview. A, yeah, just like what where they stand with it. Like, are they embracing his history? Yeah. Or are they trying to like you know, bury yeah. it or like, like why keep the name? Yeah, I think that's something like that would be really cool to find out. 
but I also yeah. will never pressure them into being like, hey. Oh, no. Yeah. If you're Why? Just... <laughs> yeah. Also, I'd be really interested in finding out what happened to Clara. Like, right? I think, like, I think great she... great grandma Clara. I hope she found a man who was really amazing, popped out even more kids, ended up marrying the guy who, um, who Holmes threatened originally, and then lived yes! happily ever after with that guy. Yes, yes, yes. I think I, I, I might have read that he, she did remarry. I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head. Fingers crossed for you, Clara Barra. Right? 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 <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so uh, do you have any more final thoughts? I, my final thought is that H.H. H. Holmes was just a piece of shit. And he, he's the He's one of the very few people that had everything going for him mm -hmm. and no excuse, like excuse to fall back on of like having a traumatic brain injury that yeah. changed his shit and, and growing up within like abuse or, a you know, horrible system. Like yeah. there, there was nothing that stuck out that would have paved the way for yeah. this outcome. He almost he almost did it for the fun of it. Yeah, and he even oh yeah. I mean I it was all I mean it was all for financial gain from yeah. from what I get it. I forgot to mention his like his last one of his last quotes, he said, I could not help the fact that I was a murderer. No more than a poet can help the can help the inspiration to sing like holy he, shit so, yeah, so he, he was he was like i did it i'm good at it couldn't help it yeah he was like i was born to do this this is what i'm supposed to do i can't help it this is my talent I th I like think, that's i think that that brief encounter with the the skeleton was that tipping point and he just kept going downhill yeah. from there like yeah so we really have those bullies to blame, right? You rat bastards. Why, why, why do the victims always become serial killers? Like fucking. I know. Like I guess because they're smart and they're like, hey, hey, yeah. Hey, hey. But like you, you never hear of like the bullies being like, you know, these like know. super weird dudes who you know start committing murders and shit. I mean, they probably yeah. did, but they like not to the level that. The people that not like they this. bully, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Um so I mean Dang. I think with that we are with all that. we are all finished with our story of H. H. Holmes. And hopefully you know a little bit more about us now too. Mm -hmm. Uh coming up in our next episode, what do we got, Katie? What do we got? Well, we are going to do a nice, nice little mystery. Where did I write it down? There we go. We're going to do the Black Dahlia. Ooh. Yeah. We still haven't decided on our, our second story yet, have we? I know. On our oh, no, wait. Yes, we have. Yes, yeah. we have. I forgot about that. I, wrote, I even wrote it down here. Hey, right? I know. I'm like, wait, what did we decide on? And then I saw my notebook and I was like, oh yeah, hee hee. Because right. we have so many ideas just like popping off all the time. Right? I know. Uh, so we're actually going to dive into the creepy pasta that is Candle Cove. I'm going to oh, make sure to yeah. include some media references just for you because we are going to start doing our own separate research we kind of both did half research on H. H. Holmes for this episode um and when i'm we're not too sure on when it'll happen but when the zodiac comes up we will also be doing something similar to this series or this style of episode so, yes yeah oh, i'm excited i'm excited me for too so make sure you guys tune in next week well, no, no, it's not even next week. We don't know when it's going to be. We don't know. We got some scheduling we got to figure out now just to keep yeah. you guys on your toes. 
I it's guess off your toes. Mystery. From... Ooh, it will be a true mystery. We'll give you a ring <laughs> when we're ready for you to call in to the Killers and Mysteries hotline. Thanks for listening. <laughs>